Okay, you guys. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All honor, glory, and praise be to our one and only Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I wanted to uh, conversate today um, a little bit about people who have decided to forsake the foolishness in this world, some of it being foolishness and some of it being not foolish, but they've chosen to forsake it nonetheless to live off the grid. And um, I really feel like that that's something that a lot of people should consider. Um, one thing I can say about stepping out of a created or controlled or I'm hearing situation is that you begin to see everything across the broad spectrum. And by that I mean, okay, let's take a look at the United States in its entirety. As far as the issues that this country faces, whether if it deals with racism, um, financial issues, um, social issues, um, anything pertaining to this country, especially things that pertain to racism and discrimination and things of that nature, you will see the truth of everything about the United States once you live outside or travel outside of the United States. See, sometimes you have to get away from something to see it. And by that I mean, sometimes you're too involved in something, you're too up close, and you can't see because you're too camouflaged into the environment of the agenda. Are you following me? So even as it boils down to issues of racism and what's acceptable and what's deemed not acceptable and this, that, and the third and how people internalize the negativity that they get off and out of this world as it pertains to this country and not to say other countries aren't tainted the same way, but there's nothing like getting in touch with your own motherland, meaning where you originated, where your people originated, your ancestry. And then you look back at where you may have been brought to, not you necessarily, but your ancestors, and where you were born, the ground that you were born on. So what I'm basically talking about is um, also how people view themselves versus how they would view themselves had they not been born in a country that is originally not their motherland. And um, so that's why I was saying sometimes you have to get away from certain situations and circumstances in order to really see. You're, you're too up close, you're too involved um, to even see the game of it, to see the mind game, to see the structures that have been manufactured deliberately around your lives to make you feel a certain type of way about yourself or to make you feel codependent on a certain group of people or to prevent you from uh, having the desire to be able to provide for yourself, have gardens for yourself and, and raise your own um animals for food production and things of that nature because you've been groomed and conditioned to be dependent upon somebody that wants to project some sort of control over you. I want you to know that the United States is a controlled environment. It is a controlled experiment as well. Um, there's a reason why you can't break the structures around this world because they are gridlocked by the satanic hand of Satan the devil himself. And he has certain people positioned in certain high places that will adhere more to his will than the will of God. And the only reason why you are standing as good as you are standing is due to divine intervention by God Almighty himself. Because I'm telling you, if God were to lift his hand totally off of this country or off of this world, we will all be in for it. You better thank God for the intervention of Jesus Christ. You better thank God that Jesus Christ intervenes in our situation, even though there are people out there that hate him and despise him and blaspheme his name. You better thank God that God is not like men, and that God doesn't say, well, forget y'all because y'all said forget me. You better thank God that he's merciful. You better thank God that he has grace, a grace period, because that's what you're living in. Your entire life is a grace period. Because when we all should have been dead sleeping in our graves, God said, yet live. 
And I'm not saying he said it in those exact words, but hey, you're living. Well, it's somebody's will. It's God Almighty. Can I talk this thing out today? But we're talking about living off the grid. And, and, and then, then you will see how it pertains to so many different areas and avenues of your life, of our lives. Economical issues, financial issues, everything, even relationships as it pertains to living off the grid. Living off the grid means living without connections to public utilities like sewer, water, and electrical lines. It is the life of a minimalist, efficient, self-reliant lifestyle. To me, it seems more like it's more hassle-free. Those people are not so easily brainwashed within the matrix because they're, they're really not in the matrix, per se. You understand what I'm saying? They're not reliant upon um, what we all are. Because whoever you have to rely on becomes your master in some form or sense of the word. Oh, well, if master don't allow it, I just don't have it. Because there are people in this world that do not want you to be self-sufficient and self-reliant. Why? They want you to be dependent upon them because they always want to emit some level of control over you. Control free. To have a control factor. And that stems from the demonic mind of Satan the devil. Because Satan wanted to what? Exalt his throne above the stars of God. He said, I will. If, go read the book of Isaiah. How many, how many boasts that Lucifer made? I will exalt. I will. And he did nothing. You're not going to come in God's house and take over. That's why I try to tell you that the enemy is like a dog on a leash. But, but God holds the leash. So no matter what controlling factors that Satan um, tries to project onto this world, you must understand that God is the supreme authority. That there is nobody higher. There's nobody greater than Father God. There's nobody greater than you. Father, Father said there is nobody beside me. He, Father doesn't have to get permission from anybody. He is the permission giver. See, Satan has to have permission to do the dirty things that he do to people in this world. Because God is like, hey, I got full control over everything, the good and the bad, the good and the evil. I can start you all over again like it never happened. Hey, behold, I make all things new. I can do anything but fail you. Am I talking to somebody out there today? See, there's a reason why when you run to the polls and you vote and you vote and you vote, nobody seems to really make a difference. It's not necessarily a knock to the person or the people that really wanted to make a difference but couldn't. But they're gridlocked, meaning they have people over them that want to uh, bring some sort of control over them. But the highest level of control as it pertains to the demonic work in this world is Satan. Satan is over all those that he has in charge. That's the reason why there are different levels to those that are in his kingdom that desire to um, corrupt this world. But that's why, you know, you might have somebody to come in that want to make a difference, but then they've got a satanic person over them. And then that person has a satanic person over them. And then that person has a satanic person over them. And then the next one will be, will be Satan the devil himself. That's the reason why no matter how much you vote, this world does not change. The structure does not move. It does not quake. It does not shake. Because Satan has it gridlocked around his ideal, around his uh, will, around what he wants. And then God is above Satan. And God will only allow Satan to exert a certain level of control because Adam gave Satan authority in the garden through an act of transgression. But God is still in full control. Because even when Adam had sinned um, against God, God already knew. The Bible says that the voice of the Lord came walking through the garden in the cool of the day. Well, the cool of the day is the evening time. The most relaxed time. So evidently, you know, maybe Adam and Eve, you know, they went up, they were, things were, uh, evidently things were.